Now then, here's uh, a fact for you, maybe for a pub quiz. It usually happens about four times a century. Hanukkah and Christmas fall on the same day this year in a week's time. And in another sign of good relations, the chief rabbi has launched a new interfaith initiative aimed at improving ties between religions at the grassroots level. Well, Chief Rabbi Mervis joins me now. And a very good morning good to morning, you, Chief Rabbi. Tell, well, tell me about this uh, only four times a century, Hanukkah and Christmas falling on the same day. Why is that? <laughs> it's pretty rare. Uh, we have a lunar-based calendar, which is affixed to the solar system. Now, that sounds quite complex. <laughs> and as a result, we have seven leap years every 19-year cycle, and that means the addition of an additional month. Consequently, Hanukkah takes place in November, December uh, every year uh, on different dates of the Gregorian calendar. And it's very rare for the first day of the eight-day festival of Hanukkah to coincide with Christmas, and it's happening this year. Well, let joy be unconfined. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Well, thank you for explaining yeah. that. I'm going to write that down and refer to it <laughs> afterwards. Tell me, tell, tell me, Chief Rabbi, about the, this interfaith initiative. You've been meeting with, amongst others, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Well, the Archbishop of Canterbury and I, we work closely together in many ways. And last month, we launched the In Good Faith initiative. It's wonderful. We brought together 70 rabbis and priests from around the country for a day-long seminar in Lambeth Palace. The idea is that they could meet their counterparts, discuss key issues with them, and as is the case with every good initiative, it's the follow-up, it's the durability of the project which counts. And so th these rabbis and priests now will be collaborating together within their regions to guarantee that they work together in the future. Okay, but people are gonna say, right, you know, warm words, you're all getting together and all believing that, you know, the world should be a nicer place, but you have to get out there and you're talking about <laughs> doing things. Doing what? Ah, doing an enormous amount. Social responsibility, uh, visiting each other, making joint statements, understanding where each other are coming from. There are various topical issues. Sometimes there have been difficulties. And through dialogue, we can understand people better. Mm. Is this just Christians and Jews, or are you reaching out to some of the many other faiths represented in the UK? This particular initiative is the Jewish community, together with the Anglican community. I work very closely with Cardinal Vincent Nichols as well, and the Catholic community, and we have some wonderful organizations involving the world of Islam, such as the Three Faiths Forum, and also the Council of Rabbis and Priests, and many other organizations around the country. Mm. Well, tell me what that experience tells you, and uh, given events of the last, well, year and few years in the United Kingdom, about social cohesion, and uh, about, you know, lots being mentioned about anti-Semitism, about uh, hate attacks. Have you seen that, that grow? and then diminish this year or stay about the same? Tell me. The last year has been a worrying one with regard to anti-Semitism. It's also been an encouraging one. It's been worrying because levels of anti-Semitism in the continent and in Britain have unfortunately risen. Together with that, both on behalf of the government and the judiciary, we've seen some very welcoming moves. The announcement by Theresa May last week that the government is going to adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism is something which IHRA. we... IHRA. International Holocaust Remembrance right. Alliance. And this is a clear definition that the government is going to adopt. And I was very pleased that the Labour Party almost immediately endorsed the announcement of the government and will likewise be accepting this definition. But you weren't too pleased with them, were you? I mean, not over pleased with uh, their dealings with allegations of anti Semitism amongst some of its membership and then the, the Shami Chakrabarti review that they held. This year has been one of deep disappointment in that regard. However, recently there's been a lot of constructive talking coming from the leadership of the Labour Party. Now that the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism has been endorsed by the party, we're entering into 2017, which is a year crying out for action, and that's what we hope to see. And while we're on that, that issue, let me broaden it out from anti-Semitism. When you hear discussions within a society, within a, a country, which starts to, to question the role of, of foreign people, of others more broadly, and it's not just happening in, in our own country, do you think that gives some people a license then to indulge in, in anti-Semitism. They, they, interpret, they, they interpret those signs in that way. Anti-Semitism is the oldest hatred. And nobody has yet succeeded in pinpointing where does it come from and what is it actually all about. You know, it's, it's the biggest problem that we face. 
However, we need to confront it. Education is a key. And also having the right kind of legislation, setting the right tone within society, preventing and dealing with instances that is very important and I'm heartened because throughout 2016 going around the UK so many people voluntarily came up to me to say we're embarrassed by what is happening we totally disassociate ourselves from it this is not the real UK and I believe that they're right and also you getting out there as well so to speak tell me very quickly about a, a, an initiative you another initiative you, yeah. you got amongst those it's, I, i'm so excited it's the benazai program taking place next week my wife and i were in india at the beginning of this year we entered into the slums in addition to visiting jewish communities there we were so taken by what we saw and we came back to the uk and we said we've got to do something and so we've launched the Benazai program. Next week, 16 top Jewish university students will be going to the slums in Mumbai. They'll be working there. And from their experiences, they'll be coming back to the UK to be our emissaries for social responsibility within the nation. Because they are going to make a statement that it's a core part of Jewish religion that we don't only concern ourselves with ourselves, but we reach out to all others. We see the divinity within every single soul. Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Mervis, very good to see you. Happy Hanukkah. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed for coming. <laughs> Thank you.